Yo, what's up boys? It's Beta here with the third update video of the Spectral Throw Dexterity Stacking Dead R. Should you have not seen the last two videos, I recommend that you check them out. That way you know how to level through the campaign and progress the build comfortably. You can catch me live on Twitch every day, so should you have questions or maybe need help, pop on over into my streams or over onto my Discord and ask away. I'm always willing to assist. Budget-wise, nothing drastic has changed with this budget as most gearing pieces are, are rather expensive, so we were pretty much limited on what we could actually upgrade. The total budget for this variant is 13 to around about 15 divans, which is to upgrade from the previous version and, and I have not included the total cost of everything as it's more realistic to upgrade than to put the character together as it currently is. I have once again broken down the cost of the items and included trade links for you under the notes section in the POB, which can be found down below in the description for you, along with the previous two videos. Please drop a like, subscribe and share the video as it does help me out to reach a lot more exiles. Damage wise, we have improved to around about 2.9 pinnacle boss DPS with super fast attacks, clocking in at around about eight plus attacks per second to swiftly deal hard critical strikes and as much damage as possible. Should spectral throw be at the very edge of its travel distance prior to it returning, you can easily expect around about eight million DPS with three hits on small targets and around about 13 million DPS on a larger hitbox uh, in terms of bosses and that, whereby you're reaching around about five hits or so, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but this is just a average. I'm not 100% sure, but sometimes the projectiles will like overlap each other, which double dips the damage. And I honestly cannot explain this or find any information on it. It is rather strange, yet it is really awesome when it does happen. Defensively, we have a 55k plus effective hit pool now, the same amount of life and leech as we previously had, for more sustained 200 plus life regen with the new tech added to the build being petrified blood, we are able to take more damage and die less while having a effective 59% spell block to further mitigate spell hits. Chaos damage is still rather deadly, but not as bad as it was with extra chaos resistance from a small cluster. And obviously, our best line of defense is still killing enemies before they can kill us. Content-wise, you can do juiced mapping, except for the rogue exiles, as they hit like absolute trucks, and 60% delirium is fine, but not any more than that. Every single uh, invitation and boss is easy, aside from doing ubers, as our damage is still rather lackluster, so they either take a, a while to... Uh, being killed or they just straight up one shot us because we can't phase them quick enough as we don't have enough damage other than that t17s are also doable with sometimes dying to random stuff but overall it's still super fun with the extra attack speed feeling much more comfortable overall modifiers that you should avoid remain exactly the same as the previous video for T16 mapping and that. However, T17 mods that aren't good for the build include increased critical strikes, less defenses, any form of reflect, the petrification statues are just aids, less action speed per attack dealt recently is also just terrible, and obviously elemental penetration. The other mods are doable in that, you just do need to uh, be aware of where you are placing your character, as you can't exactly stand in everything and expect to be a tanky boy. For our jewels, we are still using the uh, Thread of Hope and of course the Brutal Restraint, exactly the same as the previous update video. But now, instead of having the other nodes in the tree in that, we are now using a large cluster jewel for Calamitous for the additional damage and effect of uh, ailments. And it also gives us the additional chance to freeze, shock, and ignite, which is a little bit helpful. And then, of course, the Veteran Defender for the all attributes and the additional elemental resistances and the increased defenses from our Svalon shield. And then we are using a medium cluster over here for the increased projectile damage. And then I have also got eye to eye on it and repeater once again for the additional uh, projectile damage and a little bit of uh, attack speed. And then just a normal jewel over here with some dexterity, attack speed and laugh. And then for the uh, small cluster, 
I'm using a 35% increased effect chaos resistance one. The reason why I'm using this instead of getting it on other gear and that is just so that we have at least got somewhat of a positive amount of chaos resistance because getting it on gear and that is really expensive and that would have led to us going over the budget and I really did not want to go over the budget. So this just makes it a lot easier for you to get your chaos resistance alongside some extra dexterity as well and maybe some intelligence or whatever that you do need. In terms of gearing, nothing crazy has actually changed in that because once again, we are on a tight budget and a lot of these items do end up being very, very expensive. So I'm just gonna quickly run over what I have changed in that. For the uh, claw, I managed to annul off the fire damage in that. And then I decided that I will just multi-mod the claw for the uh, increased attack speed and critical strike chance because realistically picking up a budget form of the claw, they begin at like between five to like nine divines each in that. And there aren't a lot of them on the market available on them. So I would recommend that you end up either annulling yours to get lucky like I did, or you can just stick with your current claw. It really doesn't matter as long as you've got the uh, critical strike chance and the cold damage alongside the hunter modifier for the added cold damage to uh, this weapon per 10 dexterity. And as we've got even more dexterity, we have gained even and more damage out of that. And then for your helmet, you have to get a Fractal Thoughts, which has got Socketed Skill Gems, get a 90% cost and reservation multiplier. This is so that you are able to fit in your auras, but I'll be going over the auras in a bit. For the shield, still using exactly the same shield, exactly the same supports in it as well. And then for our amulet, we are still using the same amulet. However, all I've done is just re-rolled it to get all attributes for attribute requirements. And I just crafted on some life in that. So basically all that you really need is to ensure that you have got enough strength and intelligence. And in doing so, I are stuck with this one with the all attributes. And then I also got some strength on the belt as well. Uh, which I also re-rolled, managed to get a decent life roll on it with a little bit of resistance, and once again crafted on the increased elemental damage with attack skills. And then for your rings as well, which are now going to be ones that have got the increased uh, dexterity implicit modifier. Obviously you pick up ones which are 6% only, and then you'll use a couple of the dexterity essences as we have been previously doing to land any decent amounts of uh, elemental resistances and or laugh maybe, maybe some additional uh, damage modifiers and that. And then just make sure that it has got a empty uh, prefix. That way you can craft on the non-channeling skills have got negative seven to total mana cost. Once again, just to bring down our total uh, cost on our skill. And for your amulet anoint, it needs to be deadly inclinations for the increased evasion rating, a little bit of laugh, the additional projectile damage, and of course the dexterity that we gain from it. This overall is probably the, the best anoint that you can put on, but you can put on any others however you see fit. Moving on to our chest piece, you have to get a grasping mail for the 1% increased attack speed per 25 dexterity. This modifier overall is giving around about 70% increased attack speed, which is absolutely insane and it is really, really good. And aside from this modifier, you should try and pick up one that's got any uh, laugh, maybe a little bit of resistance in that. It's not really a train smash if you don't have those. It does just help us out a little bit defensive wise. And then for the implicits, you must try and get the 1% less damage taken per uh, 220 dexterity. This gives us around about six to 7% less damage taken. And then of course the uh, increased critical strike multiplier for attack damage, just to bring up our multiplier a tad little bit more. And then with the gloves, I'm still using exactly the same gloves with dexterity, attack speed, a little bit of resistance and some laugh. And then of course our rage on hits and the spell suppression. And then with our boots, we've now swapped out our boots for ones that have got dexterity, laugh, a little bit of resistance, some movement speed. And then of course I've crafted on the uh, additional chaos resistance, just so that we have got a positive chaos resistance overall. And then of course you want the increased elusive effect on the implicit and action speed just to make us a little bit more speedy and just to increase that elusive effect once more.
for your auras in the helmets, obviously, because of the reservation multiplier, we are using a level three in Latin. And then we've got our grace socketed in here with purity of elements. And then we're using petrified blood for the 40% of life loss below half life is prevented. And then 76% of the life loss prevented this way is only lost over four seconds. This allows us to take much bigger hits, making the bowl just way more comfortable overall. And then of course, we need to reserve our life. So I'm using a arrogance support along with Tempest Shield for the immunity to shock and also the additional spell block chance. And then I'm using a leveled up vitality. This way it's able to put us at around about 50% life. That way our skills only cost mana and not mana and life just to make things a lot easier. And then in the gloves, I'm still using Sniper's Mark, Mark on Hit, Life Tap and Enhance. The reason why we're using Enhance is to just further increase the quality of Sniper's Mark so that way enemies take the additional uh, damage from projectile hits. And then in the boots, just Whirling Blades for movement, Blood Rage still alongside our portal and cast on death. And then the shield you know about already. And lastly, in our body armor, we're using Spectral Throw with Cold Penetration still, Night Blade, and increased Critical Strikes, just so we're able to push our Critical Strike chance to above 90%. And then, of course, still Elemental Damage with Attacks, and our Trustworthy Inspiration for the more damage and Critical Strike chance once again. With your flasks, you should get the Implicit used when charges reach full. This way, you're not pa uh, pianoing your flasks. And then, of course, you must try and get the uh, Prefix modifier, to gain a flask charge when you deal a critical strike chance. This way, it's just a lot easier for you to sustain your flasks in that, making for a more comfortable experience for you. And then on one of your flasks, you need to craft on the chance to avoid being stunned. This way, you can select a different pantheon, but I'll get into that in a bit. So the flask gives 50% chance to avoid being stunned, and then the other 30% chance comes from Perfectionist over here in the tree. And then the the rest, so you can have a 100% chance, comes from Heart of Oak and the uh, node prior to that as well. This way, you've got a 100% chance to avoid being stunned, so that way you cannot get stun locked. For the Pantheon, I'm now using Soul of Lunaris for the increased uh, physical mitigation and movement speed while mapping. And then, of course, you can avoid projectiles and avoid projectiles that have chained as well. This is really, really good to ignore the uh, chain modifier in T17s. And then for the other one, we are using Abrath, so that way we are unaffected by Burning Ground, as Burning Ground will deal a shitload of damage to us, because we don't exactly have a lot of uh, HP available, so degens are really, really bad for the build, and this way we can just uh, mitigate that. You can, of course, use Shikari for the reduced chaos damage taken in that. This is entirely up to you. And then in terms of bossing, I would use Soul of Solaris for the additional fizz damage, the chance to take less area damage from attacks, and of course the reduced elemental damage taken if you haven't been hit recently. All right, and that is it for this update video, Exile. Should you have enjoyed it, please do drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Remember, I am live daily over on Twitch. And other than that, thanks for watching, Exile, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.